never been in a closet. And I wasn't going to start being in no closet just because I wanted to rap about stuff I wanted to hear. I got tired of only listening to the girl song rapping her part. I want to hear something that, 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 <laughs> something that sounds like me when I'm in the car rapping. tuned in to verse tv and i am rico castellan make sure you hit that like share comment tweet retweet hashtag pound everything subscribe now and get all the tea on verse tv pound that ass see y'all what's up guys it's your boy trubby's music here and if you hear my voice you know what that means it's time for all the tea with verse tv Oh my God, super excited about today. Super excited in the building. We got somebody who's definitely a neighbor to where I grew up. So I want to ask a question during this interview. At that point, I'm super excited now to do this. Uh, but without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to get to this interview we have in the building all the way from the ATL College Park. College Rico Park. Castanine. Ah! Going on straight out of College Park. This is Rico Castanine right here to give you the tea. Home first, DB. I can't wait. It's about to be on and popping. Hey, exactly. Just like that. Just like you said it, y'all. So now we know you're from the ATL. We know you're from College Park. Is that is that originally where you're from? Before I ask the question. No. Okay, you're originally oh, you're from right. College Park. Just so you know, I went to Riverdale High School and I graduated oh. in 2004. Uh, I graduated. I was in the choir with Sierra. We, we, we sang in the choir together. Okay. Riverdale. So well, I just wanted to tell I, you that. I went to Westlake, and I actually played football with Cam Newton. I was his center for all four years. Come on, now. See, we see, LA is a big place, and we know a lot of people know some people, y'all. Boom, just like that. So, talk to me. So, like, being from College Park, has that influenced your work at all? All the way. Like, I, I, I am not, I did, I did have the luxury of having both my parents in my life, and they were both hardworking parents, and I do, they do have money. But... I was a little rough hooligan and hung out with a rough crowd. So <laughs> Talk about I, was little, I was a little rebellious growing up, but I um I hung out with a lot of dudes. Like I played football. I was openly gay. Like I was openly gay. Like everybody knew I was gay. I never hid who I was. I came into ninth grade saying, Hey, I'm the gay ninth grader. I'm running for Mr. Ninth grade. So I never <laughs> hid who I was. I never hid who I was because I was like, bitch, you can't, you gonna like me or you gonna get your ass? It's the one or the other. Um, my, I, I had friends that lived in Perry Homes. I, I knew people in Herndon Homes. I, Fourth Ward. I mean, I was all around hell. So, I mean, it wasn't nothing for me to actually be gay and be a boy at the same time and not have to be overly masculine because I'm not. I'm just myself, and I tell a nigga quick, I'll check you, and I can check you with my heartbeat, and you don't want these hands, man, day. Oh, I mean, it was very serious when you said it, so if, they didn't, if you don't know, now you know. You're going to learn today. I see it. Today. Outside. I'll step outside right now and finish, and we'll be back. Now, I get it. We don't we need don't, we don't no smoke. Not, not over here, but I definitely oh, get it. Oh, smoke. Get it. My tag. <laughs> Oh, well, really, see? We look at the spirits of speaking. So tell me, how long have you been creating music? Actually, I have been creating music. It's coming up a year, coming up on a year now. I've only been doing music professionally a year, but I've always been rapping. Like, I was in high school, all the boys at lunch, they'll be talking. And I used, I watched 80 Mile. So I was like, yeah. I, I remember when, when um, Eminem said, you gotta, I'll talk about myself before you talk about me. So I could take the power. I used to always be like, I'm the fag with the with the last and the tongue that can eat. So if a nigga want to talk, he can eat in the street. Eat this pussy, put it in your face and lick it real good. That's why your bitch mad, ho, because I got him so good. So I would. That's how I would be. <laughs> yes, I can see it. I see it all the way. They wouldn't understand how to come back at it because if you said, oh, you a gay, 
You already said that. So you got anything else that you can talk about? I, I'm fat. Okay. Niggas like complexion thick. What's up? Like, right, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? That ain't been said already. Give me something else. Right. So you can't say nothing. You can't take anything from me that I'm not going to give. I'm going to give it to you with how I want to hear it before you give it back to me. And by the time you give it back to me, it's a wrap. I done killed you. <laughs> I done went about you three times. I came back and asked you, some, are you done yet? Got it. I get it. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not doing this with you. Uh, so tell me, who would you say is your target audience for your music? Uh, my target audience, a lot of my music is is based off of like Yin Yang Twins, Phil Mob, um, Little John, um, Lil Chat, uh, E40, Trick Daddy, Trina. Like, I, I, I make dance music, but it's just aggressive. Like, it's okay. a throwback. It's a throwback to the 90s when you had, well, yeah, the 90s when you had, um, Nuck If You Buck, uh, the, uh, Crime Mob, uh, you had, you had Juvenile. You, you, you know, that type of music, it gives you that old energy. Like, you don't get a lot of hype music anymore. Like, a lot of people are on a Drake tip or they trying to sound like Frank Ocean or right. they, they like to make themselves feel so, I call it very spiritual music. Like, everybody wants it to be such a deeper meaning and they want you to go get a thesaurus and look up everything and put together hyperboles and <laughs> different stuff. Bitch, I want you to shake your ass. I want you to, I want you, when you get done hearing my music, I want you to be sweating because you couldn't help but move. Period. I love that. Listen, the thing is, as an artist, people don't understand. Like, if you really are, if you're an artist, you stand behind what you say, you stand behind what you do, and you stand behind what you believe in. And this is what you're saying. I don't give a fuck about all that. Get your ass on the floor. Let me see it drop to the ground, move around. Let's do it. I want to take, I want my music to be like the classic barbecue music. Like, you know, when you put my song on, a bitch about to get on the dance floor and about to twerk for about good two minutes. That, that's, or yeah. every oh. time. One of those situations, you be like, uh-uh, that's my song. Hold up, cover my plate up. I'll be right back. But like, what? you know it's hot. But it's like, everybody want to move to the dance floor. They leave their possible somewhere just to go bust a one right. thing. Got it. Or how you know if you hear nuck if you buck in the club, somebody gonna break out into a fight somewhere. You know every time you hear nuck if you buck, a fight is going to happen somewhere. That's the type that of I'm song. To make that type of stuff. That song. I was in high school at Riverdale when it came out. That that whole rivalry with them and, and the guys from my school. It was a whole yeah, thing. Yeah, like when yo. I, when I, Right in my EP, I would call him and be like, ooh, bitch, I need you to listen to this real quick because this, this sounds so fine. I need your opinion. And he was right there the whole time. Like, he always would say, I would be surprised when the album come out. I don't want to hear everything. So, that was, but he was my he was my, my right hand in the process of doing this. So, Headshot was one of the songs that when I heard the beat, I automatically thought of him and me on it. And I just... It, we are like the the head busting twin. Like if if he fight, I fight. So of course we had to put out a song where it was just that kind of energy. Like when you hear that song, that song makes you want to get up and punch somebody. Like bitch, pop, run up, run up, then you better run up. That's what that song makes you want to do. And it's like you haven't heard music that made you feel different type of stuff like that kind of way in so long. Because I feel like everybody's doing the same type of stuff. Everybody think they need me right. again. Everybody want to be, you know, everybody's trying to be the king and queen of rap. Bitch, are you making music that uh, bitches are going to play? Right. Are they, are, are they getting with it? Are they getting on right. to it? Are they want to dance with it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And are they rapping it every single word and want to be a part of everything they're doing? Is it a movie? Can you, can, yeah. you catch line, can you catch lines out of the song that you can use in your everyday life? That's true. You better come on and speak about it. That's fine, fine, fine. And, and you, you spoke about a couple of things like Ace Mile and some of the artists that you compare yourself to who inspired you. What what inspired you to probably be openly openly homo rapper and be like, look, this is what it is. I'm gonna be this, and I'm this is who I am, and that's that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like cause it, it wasn't easy, I'm sure, just to be like, you know. I ain't never been. I never been in a closet. 
And I wasn't going to start being in no closet just because I wanted to rap about stuff I wanted to hear. I got tired of only listening to the girl song rapping her part. I want to hear something that, 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 ah. something that sounds like me when I'm in the car rapping. Speak about it. Oh, that's... <laughs> because I grew up knowing you ain't never know. Done been to places I've been. Done seen the things that I ain't fuck about. Exactly. Your friend said you don't know nan ho. Right. Hear some things saying that sound like me, so I can feel comfortable. I got you, got you, yo, that was so good, yo. What is not the case for now? So, where did the choice for the stage name Rico Castanine come from? Okay, so Rico has always been my nickname, but Castanine is my gay my gay grandmother's last name. That's her family, her house name, and she was like an important person to me when I came into the scene. Because when I came into the scene, she was one of the people that guarded me from seeing different things and being involved in stuff that I shouldn't have been. Because I started, I'm from Atlanta, so I started clubbing at 16, 17. So I'm talking, I'm talking about like 708, uh, Chaparral, Club Miami, all those places were places that I went to. And it was because of her. And she was a drag queen. She was, she was a female impersonator. And mm-hmm. she did competitions, she did drag patches and stuff like that. And I used to travel with her to different states and things like that. So I got to see a lot of things through her. And she guarded me from a lot of stuff. And she pushed me to do a lot of things. And she always wanted me to go after my dreams and do what I want to do in life and never let anybody hold me back and tell me what I couldn't do. So when she passed, she passed a, couple, she passed a few years ago. When she passed... Um, I decided to go ahead and do everything I ever wanted to do and I ever dreamed of doing. And when I did it, I felt like she was so famous underground that it would be nice to bring her name to mainstream. So that's why I kept her last name. Wow. That's an amazing story. And also I can know to see you, Virginia, your um, family. You know what I'm saying? Like, it means a lot to be able to have your inspiration in your life. And then when they pass away, to be able to continue their legacy. And so she's proud of you and she's signed down. You know what I'm saying? Say work, work, work the name and make it work. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so keep it up. You know what I'm saying? You're doing what you need to do and you're doing your part, clearly. Um, got you to where you are now. So keep it up. Um, Once again, straight out of College Park, you got Rico Castellan. That's Rico Castellan on Facebook. It's Rico World 1988 on Instagram and Rico White 2002 on Twitter. No for fans only. Sorry. Oh, damn. Bam. Just like that. Stop it.